Trading is a plan based off short-term price movement, aiming to capture fast profits, then move on to the next opportunity. And traders do this over and over, sometimes taking many trades per day, week, or month, trying to gain consistent income, much like a normal job where you receive a regular paycheck. So traders can't afford to tie up their funds and positions for years like an investor would because they need those funds to take multiple trades for profit opportunity. So traders manage their risk a little differently. They need to sell their positions when they have profited and they need to sell losing positions quickly so that their losing positions don't get out of hand and wipe away any gains they might have. Now, oftentimes, traders take positions using their entire account balance and mean to capture a quick short-term price movement. For example, let's say a trader has an account balance of $5,000, and they want to buy a stock that is currently priced at $5. Now, if they wanted to use their entire account balance to purchase that stock, they would be able to buy 1,000 shares at $5. $5,000 account divided by $5 equals 1,000 shares. So they buy 1,000 shares of the stock at $5, wait for the price to go up. Maybe it goes to 510, they're happy with it, they got a 10 cent profit, and then they decide to sell. So when they do go to sell for a 10 cent profit, they just made $100 because they bought 1,000 shares, they sold it at $5.10, that equals $5,100. So $5,100 minus their original investment equals a $100 profit. Now, sometimes these trades, they can last for seconds, minutes, a couple days, or a couple weeks. It just depends on what the strategy the trader is using. But because they are quickly getting in and getting out, they get to keep that $100 while also keeping their $5,000 original investment to possibly use to do the same thing again. So by doing this over and over, those $100 gains add up. And then at the end of the month or whenever they decide to transfer those earnings from their broker account into their personal bank account, they can use that money and put it towards their bills, their groceries, or whatever. Now, in a perfect world, a trader could repeat this process over and over and make $100 every time forever. But the market can be random and unpredictable and sometimes does what we least expect it to do. So it's inevitable that a trade won't go according to plan and money will be lost. In fact, it's common for traders to lose 30 to 50 percent of the time. And when traders do find themselves in a losing position, they can't afford to just hold the position until it comes back to the entry price to break even because there's no telling how long that could be. It could be weeks, months, years, or even worse, never happen. So traders need their funds so they can keep trading and keep capitalizing on opportunity to produce income. So how is it even possible to make money if 50% of the time traders find themselves in a losing position? Well, this is where proper risk management comes in. Now, just like diversification is the key to managing risk for investors, risk to reward ratios is the key to managing risk for traders. The amount of money you risk on each trade should be lower or at least the same amount of money as you aim to make on each trade. So let me show you how this works here. Let's say that you only want to risk $100 on a trade, but you aim to profit $100 on the trade. This is what we call having a risk to reward ratio of one to one. You're risking $100 to make $100. By doing this, this allows you to be wrong 50% of the time to break even. Now, unless your win rate is above 50%, you are not going to make money trading the markets using a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. So let's say instead on each trade, you plan to risk $100 to make $200. This is what we call having a risk to reward ratio of one to two. By having a risk to reward ratio of one to two, you just have to be right 33% of the time to break even. Now, if you have the knowledge and experience and are using a proven strategy, you should have a win rate higher than 33%. Even if you're right only 50% of the time, you're still going to be profitable. Anything in this green area is what we call a positive risk-reward ratio. And these are the risk-reward ratios you should be using when applying a risk management strategy because you don't have to need a high win rate to make money or at least break even. It's more forgiving. Sometimes you'll be on a hot streak having a win rate of 70 or more percent, and sometimes you'll be on a cold streak having only a 40% win rate. So by staying in this positive risk-reward ratio range, 
you have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to being wrong or making mistakes. Whereas if you had a negative risk to reward ratio, anything in this red area, you have to maintain such a high win rate just to break even. And having that type of pressure to need to win all the time may cause you to make a lot of mental mistakes. So in order to apply proper risk management, we have to have strict discipline to sell a losing position before it gets too big. And we use stop loss orders to achieve this. A stop loss is a market sell order that is triggered whenever a trader's max loss is reached. So let's say we only want to risk $100 on a trade in case we are wrong. Once we are down $100 on the trade, we need to accept that we are wrong and sell for a loss so we can protect ourselves from the loss getting bigger and we can move on to another opportunity. So in order to risk a fixed amount on every single trade, which is in this case $100, we need to calculate the correct number of shares to take on any position. Because since each stock is priced differently and has different ranges of price movement, the amount of shares that we take on the position needs to match the dollar amount that we are risking. So to do this, we need to know ahead of time before taking the trade, what price we will sell at for a loss and what price we will most likely enter the trade at. And based on the distance in price between our stop and our entry, that will determine our share size. Now, if you remember, traders use charts showing past price performance to try to determine future price performance. So here we have a chart that expresses the same pattern over and over. It dips down, touches this line, goes up. Dips down, touches this line, goes up. Dips down, touches this line, goes up. So here we notice the same pattern happening again. And if we wanted to take a trade predicting that the same pattern is going to happen, it's going to bounce off this line, it's going to go up, we need to apply a risk management strategy just in case it doesn't do what we are expecting here. So if we want to risk a fixed dollar amount, we need to calculate the correct number of shares to take. So let's say on every single trade, we don't want to lose more than $100. It's going to be our max loss. So that part of the equation, we already know. So the next part is we need to determine what price we are going to sell for a loss. If the stock ends up dropping, what price are we going to sell? Now this all depends on the type of strategy you are using, but for this example, we are going to be using a common strategy where we buy off this ascending support line. So we're predicting a bounce off of this blue ascending line. Now if you remember, traders trade using technical analysis. So Analyzing the chart is the main focus, and by looking at this chart, we can maybe predict that the price is going to bounce off this blue line and continue upwards because it's done it four times in the past. So that's what we're taking a chance on right here. But if this ends up not being a bounce, if it looks like it's going to be a bounce, but it doesn't end up being a bounce and it falls through this line, well, that's going to shatter our prediction because we want it to bounce off this line. If it ends up not bouncing and falling through, this trade's not going to work. So that is when we need to accept that this trade's not going to work and we need to sell. So a good place to sell is probably somewhere underneath this blue line, which I've priced at $4.42. So that's where we are going to place our stop, $4.42. So the next thing we need to figure out is where is our entry price likely going to be? All right, well, right now the stock is trading at $4.52. So if we were to place a buy order right now, we would most likely get it at $4.52. But before we can even think about buying, we need to do the last step. We need to determine the share size. And to do this, we need to do a little bit of math. So first, how much money do we plan to risk on the trade? $100. We already determined that. Next is how far away is our stop price from our entry price? Now this difference is going to be the amount of cents that we are risking. So what's the difference between our entry price and the stop price? Well, our entry price will be 452 and our stop price will be 442. What's the difference in between our entry and our stop price? It's going to be 10 cents. So we are risking 10 cents per share on this trade. Now, step number two is, is the reward of 20 cents likely based off technical analysis? Now, this is where you're going to have to do a little bit more analysis on here, looking at the chart, trying to figure out if this stock may have the juice to get up 20 more cents. And judging by what this stock has done in the past, 
I think it could go up 20 cents, if not at least 10 cents. So by knowing that the stock may have the juice to give us at least a one to one risk reward ratio or better, a one to two, the reward is at least double what we're risking, then that's going to make for a good trade. So the last thing we need to do is take the dollars we are willing to risk, which is $100. We need to divide that by the cents at risk, the difference between our entry price and our stop, in this case, 10 cents. That will equal our share size. So $100 divided by 10 cents equals 1,000 shares. Now, of course, in order to take this trade, you need to have an account balance that will allow you to take 1,000 shares of this stock priced at $4.52. So if we are using that $5,000 account balance, well, we could take this trade because 1,000 shares times $4.52 equals $4,520. So if you had an account balance of 5,000, yes, we can take this trade. Now, when determining how much you should risk per trade, a general rule of thumb is that you risk no more than one to 2% of your entire account balance. So if you had a $5,000 account, 1% of that is $50. So on every trade, you do this same thing. You go through this same step process, but insert $50 as the amount that you want to risk and put that into the equation. So instead of doing 1,000 shares, you would take 500 shares. But personally, if you are just starting out trading, my advice is to risk an even smaller amount. Maybe risk a half a percent or lower because trading is very difficult and you're going to make a lot of mistakes, especially starting out and mainly due to one thing, irrational emotional decisions. And acting on emotion is the number one reason traders have such a high failure rate. Emotions run so much higher when trading compared to investors because traders don't have the time to let the market do the work for them. And oftentimes, they trade stocks that don't have the fundamentals to appreciate in value over time. While emotions can be a factor while investing, it's nowhere near compared to the emotions you experience as a trader. And handling your emotions in the face of losing money is one of the most difficult things anyone can do, which is why so many people fail at trading. And it's not something as easy as saying, okay, I'm not going to do that because you will. I guarantee you will, because we all do. The reason is because of how our brains are naturally wired to think. Our brains naturally tell us to pull our hand away from something hot, and it tells us to duck when something is moving towards our head. These reactions are put in place to protect us from potential pain. And when we are trading the stock market, we are constantly surrounded by potential pain, which will cause us to make some of these common self-destruction decisions. Managing risk by placing the correct amount of shares and setting a stop loss does not end there. We also have to manage our risk from ourselves, becoming our own worst enemy. The first self-destruction decision is revenge trading. Let's say that we took our very first trade of the day and it was a loss. So in order to make up that loss, we take another trade, but that one ends up being a loss. So we take another trade trying to make up those two losses, and then that trade becomes a loss. Now things start to get very frustrating and emotional, and it's common for traders to keep trading anything and everything to try to make up those losses, which could end up digging themselves further and further in the hole. So one way to protect ourselves from ever spiraling out of control with this behavior is to have a fixed dollar amount loss per day. Now, some brokers allow you to place a max loss per day on your account. So let's say that if you are ever down $100 in one day, you want to be forced to quit trading so you don't end up revenge trading. So your broker will prevent you from opening any new positions for that entire day if your account is ever down $100. And that restriction is going to be lifted the following day where your head might be a little clearer to make rational decisions. Now, the next self-destruction decision may be over leveraging. If you use a margin account to trade, your broker is going to give you leverage to increase your purchasing power. Now, this leverage is borrowed funds. So as it may seem like a good idea to borrow funds to magnify your gains, it's a double-edged sword. When you use borrowed funds, your losses are going to be magnified as well. And I see traders all the time start revenge trading, then try to use leverage to try to make one huge winning trade to dig themselves out of the hole. And this is a very big mistake because if you are wrong, it could cost you everything. Now, even though this may sound like a stupid idea and you would never do that, when you are frustrated and you're facing large losses, this idea of using leverage may pop into your head and may not seem like such a bad idea at the time. 
So my advice is just to never use leverage. Some brokers have a setting that will allow you to not use leverage or you can set a maximum position size so that you are forced to only use funds of your own. All right. So the next one is over trading. Now it's common to think that the more trades you take, the more money you will make. That's actually not the case. Low risk, high reward opportunities only present themselves just a few times a day. Even though it may seem like the opportunities are endless in the markets, you have to think of the risk associated with those opportunities. So what happens is a lot of times traders will be up a certain dollar amount, but they want more. Or they may be down a certain dollar amount and they want to make it back. Or even sometimes traders just trade out of boredom. The less you trade, the more focus you'll put on quality. And quality is better than quantity when it comes to trading. So something that you can do to prevent yourself from over trading is setting a maximum trades per day or week or month limit, whatever your strategy entails. And the very last one is FOMO, which stands for fear of missing out. Now, this one is probably going to be your number one struggle because this is the most common self-destruction decision and it's why so many people fail because FOMO triggers all of these self-destruction decisions. FOMO will be the reason you buy too high because you already missed the big move and you don't want to miss out on any further gains. FOMO will be the reason you hold a position too long because you don't want to miss out in case the stock comes back up. FOMO is going to be the reason you hold a winning position too long, not protecting your profits because you don't want to miss out on a bigger win. FOMO will be the reason you use leverage because you may have identified the most perfect trade setup and you want to make a big home run win. FOMO will be the reason you overtrade because you don't want to miss out on any opportunity whatsoever. FOMO is a tough emotion to tame. It can be done, but it's going to take some time and practice. The best thing you can do to eliminate FOMO is to follow a strict set of rules and stick to your trading plan. It's a lot easier said than done. So take your time when starting to trade because you don't want one of these decisions to cost you your entire account. So that is risk management for traders. As always, I hope you all learned something. Thank you so much for watching.